Dave, congratulations. A, a statement win, playoffs secured with a game to spare. Was that your best performance of the season? Um, I, I, I don't know. We won, and that's the, that's the main thing. It was a it was a good performance, helped by how you start the game, um, especially coming here. You know that they're very possession based. I thought we managed their rotations really well. You can tell, even though they are champions, they wanted to win the game, um, and we managed their rotations really well, which forced them into mistakes. But to get the two goals allows you to play the game in a different way. Um, so it allows you for them to have possession or control possession around the halfway line and let's look for them opportunities to try and pinch um, and go and beat them on the, on the counter attack if you like. Um, that helps by set pieces, to score from two set pieces is, is massively important and like I say, we go away with our objective what today held ticked off. An incredible scenes at the away end at the end, news filtering through that late goal for Bradford City away at Northampton, that really does leave things in the balance now heading into that final game. Yeah, things were in the balance anyway in terms of we, for the first time since I've been managing, I've wanted to know what results were going on elsewhere. So we knew that they were losing, and I mean, we knew that um, they'd equalised, if you like, and, and were picking up a point. Um, so even at that point, you, you're taking it down to the last game. Obviously, for them to, to get a goal, um, for Bradford to get a goal, changes the, the picture again. But it's going to be a constantly moving picture. It, it makes no difference around what happens elsewhere. Ultimately, we need to win here today, and we have, and we need to go and win next weekend at home at Edley Park. If we don't do that, it makes no difference what goes on elsewhere, so our sole focus has to be on that. Will you be on to your friends at Tranmere this week, regardless of that? Yes. Um, no, listen. Yeah, obviously, Parky's not in charge there, and Dorsey have taken, taken over. Um, I'd love them to do us a favour, but again, them. I've got the, they've got their own um, agenda in terms of what they need to get from the from the game, and players will be out there fighting for their own careers and, and whatever that's not, and, and looking towards next season. As I said, it makes no difference unless we do do our job, um, and we face again how our worst how we face obviously my old, my old team who again um, because of other results today, um, have, I think I think they've been relegated. Um, it's a similar scenario. They take care of their stuff, but unfortunately, a result away from there means that that's their that's their fate. Their fate sealed elsewhere, if you like. We've got to make sure that, um, in terms of our fate, we control what we can, and that'll be trying to get three points. Back to today, just the second visiting team to win here all season. To do it in such a fashion as well, it's easy, potentially lazy, to say, "Oh, Leighton are up in the title, have nothing to play for," but. That shouldn't take away from from your side of the no, it's relentless. Yeah, you look at the the, the the side that they put out was was full strength in terms of in terms of personnel. Um, I, say, I think we frustrated them first half, especially because we got those two goals and then us can press from a press from a shape. Um, we th we thought counter attack would be important, hence starting with with Tanto and, and Jack uh, to give us that that real pace at the top end of the pitch, and that that re worked really well for us. And like I say, as much as from their perspective nothing to play for they wanted to win the game um, and make this a, an extra special day for them um, it becomes a special day for them because you hear what what it means in terms of them being champions but it's a good day for us as well it's similar really to the, the start of the game at edge of the park in terms of coming flying out of the traps getting a goal early on i, I guess the big difference was you, you've got that second goal today and, and that allowed you to, to control the rest of the game really yeah and set, like i say set piece is important um but to get the second goal as you say so early um, great strike from Campsy should do it more often um, with the ability that he has, um, but puts us in a like I say in a strong position and allows us to play the game in a in a slightly more reserved way, while still wanting to maintain the aggression and, and be up being on the on the front foot, although slightly deeper than what we normally would be. I think I said on air we are waiting for uh, one of those goals from from Campsy all season really. Uh, in terms of the first goal as well for Aki, I mean. Uh, Great moment for him because he had a couple of movie moments against Carwell, against Gillingham, but that goal seemed to do him the, the, the world. Yeah, today. And, and to score and be able to go and celebrate in front of our supporters over that side, you like, is is what uh, what you hope would be would be the case. But as a, like I say, great start to the, to the game, second phase from the corner, to score from two set pieces again is, is massive. Um, and we take that into into next week now. A bit weary in terms of bodies, um, but a couple of days to I suppose recover and reflect, and, and I'm back at it in the middle of next week. How's Tanto? Um, hopefully fine, a bit, a bit of a tightening in terms of um, his groin when he ran down this down this side, so we're landing on him. Um, but we were close to half time, so we managed to get him off. So hopefully no significant damage and he can be available for us because, like I say, at the top end of his semester, we're a little bit walking wounded. 
Joel Lewis came in for his first start since January today. How impressive was he today and what was the thinking behind that change? Um, the thinking was how we wanted to play and the threats that they have. Joe's probably our, our quickest defender, potentially our best defender in terms of those 1v1 situations. We knew that Paul Smith's a, a huge threat down this side of the pitch um, and if he was rolling inside then we felt Joe would be the best um, equipped to deal with that threat and like I said I thought he, I thought he, did, thought he did great it almost him playing on the left hand side simplifies his job a little bit gives a different um, a different um, or we are different in terms of in possession because he's not a natural one that's going to step in on his left side um, but again even within that we thought that if we could play Hussey a little bit deeper that their full backs might have to bite and we get joy down the sides with the pace again of Stretz and Tanso so that was what we looked to do, um, but in terms of his defensive stuff, Joe was, as I expected to be, bang on. Um, this this year's been tough for him um, because he comes in, he's a 23-year-old he's centre-back, um, and his best years are without doubt ahead of him, and he comes into a team that was successful last year. Not only that, he comes into a team where he's potentially looking to play replace likes of Kino and Ash Palmer and people like that. Um, Joe's got a real chance, a real, real chance. Um, but he's a, a character that, confidence-wise, needed probably something like that to make him stick his shoulders back and really believe in what, in what he can do. We've got, like I said, we've got real, real, real belief and real faith. Um, he knows the areas he needs to improve. First and foremost, a very good defender, athletic, um, probably the most powerful player in our in our team in terms of gym stuff. Transferring that onto what it looks like on a football pitch sometimes is difficult for a young player. He'll only get better. As we say, he does secure that, that, that player spot at the very least. You're just the fourth in the promoted side in the last 11 years to go on and finish in the top seven. And especially after the start you had in the first 11 games, that's an achievement that, that shouldn't be underestimated. No, it was a tough start for us. Um, and again, some of that is new players bedding in. A lot of it, unfortunately, and this is what's going to be a, a potential constant, is players dealing with the step up in levels. And that, that's players from last year. I look back, sometimes you, you have to reflect at certain times and look at the changes we made and, and how that and put things. The reality of it is you go to a place like Stephen in second game of the season last year, nine of the, nine of the 11 players that started were from our title winning team in the National League. Um, the, the gaps bigger than what people think, especially when you're looking to go from the top of the National League to the top of League Two and want to be competing. Um, and unfortunately, some couldn't bridge that gap. Um, but over the course of the season, people have got used to what the level is and what it looks like. We've minimised the mistakes that we were getting punished for early on, and we've got ourselves an opportunity. And I don't care <coughs> where you are or what, from my perspective, what level you saw managing at, if someone at the start of the season offered you a place in the playoffs, I, I, I'd have taken it. I'd love to finish in the top three and we still have a chance to do that. But if I'd offered a spot in the playoffs to play in three big games and win three games to get promoted rather than or have to win 26 to get promoted, I'd take it. Playing no football, I'd take it. Um, we are in that situation, but we still have the dangle and carrot um, that we can go and grab one of those top three. One last game to go at a Salah Edgeley Park. As you say, you've said before, results elsewhere confirmed about the Bulls' relegation today. And uh, regardless of, of statements coming out from, from there, because I know it's a club that, that means a lot to you and uh, that will have been so. Of course it is, um, because I know firsthand the work that went into getting the club into the Football League. Um, there aren't many people left, certainly staff wise and players wise, from when I was there. But Sweeney's is, and, and he's someone I speak to every week, um, probably every other day, um, and he'll be hurting more than more than anybody. Um, don't know what, like I say, I, I, I continue to be have the same with the fact that I'm not getting embroiled in a muck-throwing match. Um, I'm at Stockport County now, I'm really happy at Stockport County. I said when we played them back in December, I didn't want to see Hartlepool relegated, um, but unfortunately that's, that's happened. Um, and whether for some of them there, it, it doesn't happen on the last day in terms of coming to us or now, it makes no difference. The, 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 the club will be hurting from it, the supporters will be hurting from it. I know how much that football club means to the town there. Um, and hopefully there are 
good times ahead for them. Like I say, for it to be two years ago since promotion and now be in the situation they are they are now um, is, is really disappointing. Um, but like I say, I've got to focus on what, what we're doing, and that'll be solely focused on the critical of what happens elsewhere. Yeah, as you say, it's, it's all about us doing our job now and presumably making sure that come full time next Monday there's, there's, there's no regrets or any missed opportunities. There'll be no regrets from us, I have to say, there'll be no regrets from us because um, we, we control us and I've said this before to the, the players, we all want to win. Um, you can't always win. Um, it was a very interesting thing put in our, in our group the, the other day from a uh, from Giannis, the basketball player. Um, where they've been asking a question about about failure and, and, and said that well, if, you, if you don't win the championship then is it a failure, if you don't get promoted is it, is it a failure or that's, that sport that happens, you can only control certain things. Now if we do what we do well next week and we work to the rate we, we can and we're, um, we're true to ourselves and we lose the game, unfortunately that's football um, and we'll then go into the playoffs and look forward to that. And as much as, like I say, I hate losing, Sometimes you, you have to lose, and you've got to learn to learn to lose. One thing's for certain: we'll be doing everything we can to try and win the game. I said right when I came here, and I said the same. Oh, we can't can't guarantee success, but we can guarantee doing everything we can to make sure we control that, and that won't change regardless of what the game is in front of us. Well done today, Gaffer. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you.